Want to know how top performers get 10 times more values from ChatGPT than everyone else? It all comes down to knowing the powerful techniques that most people overlook. This is also the difference between a basic ChatGPT user and a pro user. In this video, I'll share 10 plus powerful hacks of using ChatGPT, and this will seriously upgrade how you use it in your daily work tasks. Let's go. For this video, I'll be using ChatGPT Plus, the paid versions of ChatGPT, and I encourage you to do so so you can unlock all the features and techniques that I'm going to show you. First, let's go through some really cool hacks of using the Canvas Mode. Canvas Mode provides a way for you to edit, review, and collaborate with AI in real time. The most straightforward way is, of course, to ask it to generate some content and you make real time changes on Canvas. But there are some tips you probably don't know. The first way is to upload documents to Canvas and make changes directly. Directly. Most people know copy and paste, but on Canvas, you can actually just upload a document and immediately do the editing, which I found most people seldom talk about, but it is very useful. Let's say I have this work document. It contains both text and images. And now make sure you're on Canvas mode, upload the document and ask it to extract the exact full text and to edit it on Canvas mode. Boom. So now you can directly edit it and then you can make changes, whatever you like. Perhaps you have a content style guideline that you want it to follow, you can upload an ask to enhance it based on this content guideline. This is super useful to make enhancement based on your own knowledge or style. You can also click here to track the changes made, and you can also make changes using the pre-built editing functions like adjusting the length, the reading level, and not just Word document. You can even upload a PDF file, image file, and use the same prompt, and then it will extract the text and allows you to make changes, do formatting, and repurpose. Super useful useful if you have some old marketing materials, bags to update or repurpose. I would say the Canvas mode is just as powerful as some of the AI writing tools. You can literally upload any documents and ask it to extract the text for real-time editing purpose. The limitation now is that images are not supported and also if the text is too long, it may lose the context. So it currently works best for blog articles, medium-sized texts, or reports. But I'm not too worried because I'm sure it would just keep improving. And if you're serious about using ChatGPT for professional tasks, I highly recommend check out this bundle from HubSpot, five essential resources for using ChatGPT at work. I put it in the description for you to download for free. Whether you're just starting with ChatGPT or already using it, having a structured approach makes a huge difference. In this bundle, you get a lot of great resources like a practical decision flowchart, guidelines, and even a detailed checklist for refining AI-generated content. What I particularly like is the content style guideline template and 100 plus ChatGPT prompts. It is a great starting point for getting ChatGPT to write in my voice and style. An amazing list of prompt templates that gives me tons of practical ideas to use ChatGPT beyond just content creation. These are all real practical use cases you can start using for day-to-day -day work. You can download this in the description below for free. This Monday was made by HubSpot, which is today's video sponsor. A big thank you to them for providing this free resource. And that leads into the next. Format control. A string of ChatGPT is the support of different file formats. And so don't just use it for uploading purpose, but also exporting purpose. And this way you don't need to copy and paste all the time. And the file is ready right away. This is especially useful when combining with the Canvas mode. So using the prefix example, once you finish editing the document, you can actually just ask it to export it into work document file. And then you will immediately have a ready to use work document even with the formatting. As sometimes Sometimes you may not want to share the whole conversation to others, but only part of the output. So it will save you even more time than copy and paste. It also supports Excel, PDF, or even PowerPoint. Though from my experience, it works best with work file. Now, another way is to convert the response into a specific format besides file format. This is useful if you want to quickly turn any complex data into clear format and to enhance the overall content presentation. Again, on Canvas mode, and it doesn't matter if you are using the ChatGPT4 model, I'm using Canvas mode because it allows me to do some precise editing. So you can just select any part of the text and ask it to convert it into a specific presentation format. One I recommend is table format, super useful to make the content more easy to digest. Another format you can use is a checklist matrix, very useful to make it a digestible format or even a rating matrix that shows the rating breakdown by each item or a decision matrix with criteria and options or even formats like a newsletter formats, project brief formats. 
Of course, you should add some specific details in the prompts, but this is super useful as you don't need to find a template anymore. You can just literally turn it into any desirable format using the ChatGPT building knowledge. So make sure you know the skills. The next is setting the temperature level. Temperature is an universal parameter that controls the randomness and creativity in LLM's output, and not just the ChatGPT model. The higher the temperature level, the unpredictable or creative the output that will be. So it is useful to quickly change the response by using this simple setting. Let's say I ask it to draft a 200 words articles about five ways to discipline your toddlers. Now we get a very simple article draft, and by default, ChatGPT use a temperature level of 1. And then we can just type temperature equals 2, which is the highest level. And then obviously, you can see the output is more diverse and creative. But now if we set temperature equals 0, you can see now the output is definitely more predictable and certain, using phrases which are more formal. So the tip here is whenever you need more certain response when doing some factual tasks, technical writing, you can use temperature zero and use one whenever you do creative writing and brainstorming. And this can also be useful in image generation as well. So I have this simple AI generated image about a baby playing the piano. So using the same concept, when you set the temperature equals two, you can see the image is now much more creative imaginative and when you set it to zero it will become more predictable and straightforward of course you can always add more details in your prompt but this is a very handy way to adjust chat gpt's output quickly so definitely try this out in your content generation tasks all right so let's talk more about image generation everyone knows how to generate images on chat gpt powered by the daily 3 model but there are two techniques that you should know First is image quality enhancement. On normal ChatGPT 4.0 model, let's generate a simple image of a cozy home. And immediately we get an image, it looks quite good. And now we can actually use this prompt to sharpen the image and enhance the quality while keeping everything unchanged. Use this prompt in the new input, which means you're not clicking the image and editing it by using the prompt. Otherwise, it won't work. And now you can see it generated a download link for the image. It looks exactly the same, but definitely it is in much higher quality with finer details. So with this technique, you actually don't need any AI upscaling tool. It works for any image generated. Another technique is to use this in-painting tool powered by Daily 3. So first, let's generate a simple image. Now click on the image and then click the in-painting tool icon. So it will open up the brush selector for you to select the area you want to make changes. You can also change the brush size. Let's say I want to add a hairband here. So wow, now it it has a hairband or we can change the book to an electronic gadget. I found it works best for some very obvious area, change color, remove objects, and it's not a complicated change. Otherwise, you may be better off regenerating the whole image, but it's a very handy way if you want to make some quick and simple changes to the AI generated image. Next is to use the memory features. Memory is a very useful way to give additional context to ChatGPT, so it will get triggered when the chat is relevant to the current context. It helps ChatGPT to remember your details and to save time. Sometimes ChatGPT will automatically update the memories to the system. And since there is storage limits for memories, there are two amazing hacks you can use to organize this. First is to organize your memories in different what I call situation specific categories and to load it whenever you need it. For example, I can have a memory mode about content creation and ask ChatGPT to remember my core channels, the topics I cover, my target audience style and save this as content mode. And let's also add another project mode. So in this case, I use my video project as an example, giving details about the project, key takeaways, etc. And the final project is to ask it to remember something general like my current focus area, priority goals, learning objective, but are not situation specific. One tip is to use this prompt, remember triggers, and then you can type any meaningful keyword phrases after that without detailed explanation. So you can save story space for the memory. They should be short and precise, like mastering AI tools, learning advanced AI prompting skills, anything that is your primary focus. And now 
when you go to manage memories, you will see these are already stored in memories as different memory sets. Let's say you are starting a new conversation. If you answer to propose some ideas without explaining anything, then obviously it would just flow whatever it thinks that is relevant. But when you type low project mode or switch to project mode for this conversation, then it will immediately retrieve the memory context. And this time, the proposed ideas will be all relevant to this context. So you get the idea, think about the key categories, and so you can better manage the memories. So whenever you need it, you can just load it into the conversation. Another hack is export memories. This is useful in case you want to delete some memories to free up the space, but you may need to import it again to ChatGPT in future. So you can use this prompt to ask it to export the existing memory about you or a specific topic or category into a downloadable text file or JSON format. And then you're always able to use them again in the future whenever you need it. The next is custom instruction. This is a must use feature of ChatGPT, so you can always personalize the response. Unlike memory, which is more temporary, you should use custom instructions whenever you want the response to follow specific guidelines, formatting, and logic. So it is like a permanent preference and style. So you can go to personalization and set your custom instruction. The first section is about you. So say anything about yourself, like your profession, your preference, your target audience, your interests, anything. And the second section is about how you want ChatGPT to respond. And this is very important and will make a huge difference. Something that I recommend is how you want it to structure the response. For example, I don't like excessive explanation verbiage, formatting preference, and also some specific scenarios, like how it should respond when explaining a concept, proposing recommendations, proposing content ideas. And then you will see it will follow your formatting and preference, which is very useful. So make sure you use this feature. Now let's also talk about prompting techniques for ChatGPT. Instead of the common techniques that we all know about, like assigning roles, giving more context, example, there are two techniques that are very useful. First is what I call the scenario-based technique. So basically, whatever the prompt is, we will add this. Break down by three scenarios. Best likely challenge. For each scenario, identify the key factors, potential obstacles, solutions, and actionable steps. So this prompt will immediately trigger the thinking and problem-solving ability of the model and give you amazing results. So like this example about book recommendation, if I add this, you can see the response will be more thoughtful and you're forcing ChatGPT to think from multiple perspectives and provide rationale for its recommendation instead of just giving you the ideas. Another technique is the prompt review. That is to ask ChatGPT if this is a good prompt or a bad prompt, and ask it to provide the improved version. Then immediately you will see ChatGPT will give you its evaluation of your prompt, what it does well and what's not, and to give you the revised version. Very useful because then you will know what is considered a good prompt by getting the direct feedback from the model and to improve it. You can use this technique in any types of prompt. You can even use this with the O1 model, which has better reasoning, and it will give you much detailed response. I also have another video about AI prompting techniques. You can check this out. Next, let's talk about the image recognition ability of ChatGPT. As the GPT-40 model just significantly improved the vision understanding capabilities. While I'm not going to share all the use cases, there are two hacks you should be using. First, it is to extract images from a PDF file. Let's say I have this product catalog PDF from my supplier, and I want to use the images to build DAG, pose, or promotion materials. Instead of copy every image one by one, we can ask ChatGPT to extract all the images and to provide it in a single downloadable file. So see, this prompt is useful to quickly extract the images. Or if you have a public report and you want to reference and extract the image or chart to build your own project deck, you can also use this prompt. But keep in mind not to use other brand's assets without permission 
or to claim extracted images as your own. And also, if the images or charts are not extractable, then this prompt may not work very well in that case. Second, that is to ask it to propose suggestions or generate content based on the images. So in Canvas mode, let's say I have these product images about a vitamin C serum product, and then I can ask it to draft the product title and product description. And then you will see it will base on the images and propose title ideas and product description that are relevant. Of course, you should always provide more details, but you can see the description is already very relevant with its image recognition capability. And you can also adjust it on Canvas. Let's say turn this how to use section into a step-by-step, -step, and then it will immediately follow the instruction. So this is a very powerful technique that not only applies to product image, but also website layout screenshots for ideas, marketing assets for feedback. And in this case, you can even combine with some automation Tools so you can batch produce the draft for your products. If you want, you can even export it into an Excel file or Word document for better organize. All right, the next is Search GPT. This is a recently launched new features. So unlike the common search functions that we use in the past, it is integrated within the ChatGPT interface. So treat it like a standalone AI search experience. Whenever you click the icon, you will immediately turn on this function. Probably you already know how to use it to search information, but there are two tips you can use to elevate your experience. One way is to trace how the popular topic has evolved. Now on normal ChatGPT 4.0, turn on search GPT. Let's say I'm learning about everything related to AI agent, which is a very hot topic right now. And so I can use this prompt to ask it to search and compare how this topic AI agents has evolved six months ago, current trends and the future prediction. And then it will summarize some key events with a clear timeline related to the topic. And the source published day also matches the timeline, which is amazing. So this is super useful, particularly when you want to get some initial ideas about a popular topic that you are not familiar with. Another hack is to actually combine it with Canvas. Let's say I'm drafting this article about how to start a minimalist lifestyle. Now, although on Canvas mode, you cannot directly access search GPT, you can actually type the forward slash search command to trigger the new search GPT feature. Ask it to find some statistic to support the key points in this article. And then it will do the searching exactly like on search GPT with the source links. And now ask it to insert these links into the article where it fits. And so the idea is to think about ways to leverage the enhanced search capability while you're doing your normal tasks on ChatGPT. Now some other hacks you should know. They're not like make or break, but will for sure make your workflow more efficient. First again is using the forward slash command. So on the chat input, when you type a forward slash, you will immediately get a little pop-up that you can quickly switch the model. Currently there are three options picture that trigger the daily model for image generation, search that leverage the latest AI search functions, and reason that use the O1 preview model. It is very useful to switch models within the chat while maintaining the context. So let's say, for example, you can't upload files on O1 model. You can actually use the reason command to trigger O1 model in your normal chat. Although you can always add more personalized slash command using third-party tools, I found these are already very useful. Second, that is to use the chat history search functions. You'll be surprised this is crazy useful as you get more chats ongoing on ChatGPT. You can just click the search icon and type some specific keyword phrases and then it will match the keyword and retrieve all the conversations containing that keyword. Another hack is to use this Chrome extension ChatGPT Exporter. Basically, it is used to extract the whole ChatGPT conversation into different formats like text, CSV, JSON, and even image. So once you install, just click select and you can select the question and responses that you want to export. The best thing that I like is that it doesn't require any account registration. You can just start using it when you install it. It works great and is very useful. All the recently launched new features definitely makes ChatGPT a powerful AI tools for most of the daily work tasks. And there's still so many features, functions, use cases I'm not able to cover in this video. But these are for sure those you should know about and try today. And before you go, also make sure you watch this video about AI prompting techniques that you can apply on ChatGPT. I will see you next time.